What's up and welcome everybody to a new video here on the official NTG Arena YouTube channel. My name is Ash Lizzle, and in this video, it's time to play with my favorite creatures of all time, vampires. And this deck has done incredible for me in best of three. I think I'm about like 18 and five or something. It's done really, really well. So I want to figure out if this deck transfers to best of one and does just as good there as it does in best of three. So let's have a look at the deck. Let's get into some gameplay and let's figure this out. All right, so here we have my beloved vampires. And one of the best cards and new cards in this deck is the Vein Ripper from Murders at Carl of Manor. Six mana, six five creature with flying and ward cost of sacrificing a creature. And whenever a creature dies, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. This creature is basically just huge. I feel like every time it hits the board, it ends up winning you the game and this is no joke like you'll <laughs> hopefully i can show you it in the gameplay but this card is so good now this is kind of a grixis mid-range build but i feel like it's so well positioned because we're playing cavern of souls and cavern of souls is basically we have to choose a creature type which will choose vampire and then when we spend man of any color to cast a vampire the spell cannot be countered so we're kind of doing the same thing that happened during Pro Tour Murders at Carl of Manor that got won by a Rakdos Vampire deck in that meta as well. And in the current standard meta, there's a lot of blue-white control happening. And as long as you can cast a vampire using Cavern of Souls, they cannot counter it. So that gives you a really good strategy against control at least. And then they have a better strategy against all the aggro decks in the meta. We have a lot of like removal in here. So I'm playing three cutdowns, playing three go for the throats, I have one bitter triumph and i'm also playing three copies of push and pull which is another new card for murders now push you can use two mana to destroy a target tapped creature which can be you know nice removal if you need to be but the upside of pull in this deck is just incredible now pull puts up the two target creature cards from a single graveyard under the battlefield under your control they can haste until the end of turn and sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step now, if you're lucky and you manage to put two Vein Rippers into your graveyard, and then you drag them out of it with pull, you attack and they sacrifice, that adds up to exactly 20 damage. Now, I can't say I've ever been lucky enough to do that, but in general, you can get great value of pull anyways. Like, usually I can manage to grab one Vein Ripper out of the graveyard, combine it with another vampire, and it does usually end up winning me the game really nice new card with like a high upside that does a lot for like mid-range decks or to help you close out games we're also playing the deep cavern bat in here i mean i feel like no black mid-range deck is complete without the deep cavern bat nowadays deep cavern bat being a two mana one one bat with flying and lifelink and when it ends the battlefield you look at the target opponent's hand you may exile a null land card from it until the deep cavern bat leaves the battlefield so just pretty big to like you know disrupt your opponent and also give you all the information you need because you get to reveal their whole hand so um let's have a look at the vampires we're playing then we're playing the full darren epicure which is a one mana one one vampire that upon entering the battlefield deals one damage to an opponent and you create a blood token we also have the blood Tide harvester a two mana three two vampire upon entering the battlefield you create a blood token but you can also sacrifice the harvester and target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn where x is twice the number of blood tokens you control so because we're playing the Harvester, I feel like we're pretty happy playing Epicure as well to give us access to more blood tokens. But once again, like the blood tokens can also be incredibly relevant for that huge like push and pull turn. Like I could discard Vein Rippers and then like pull them out. And I just in general, I'm a huge fan of the blood tokens and will be very sad when they rotate out. <laughs> so, OK, another card that is huge and probably like the main reason we want to be in Grixis is Corpse Appraiser, a three mana. 3-3 Vampire Rogue in the colors of Grixis that upon entering the battlefield exiles up to one target creature card from a graveyard. If a card is put into exile this way, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of those cards into your hand and the rest in your graveyard. So once again, I love the fact that this thing also puts the cards in the graveyard because it synergizes nicely with push-pull. But in general, Corpse Appraiser as a 3-mana 3-3 just literally looks at three cards, grabs whatever card you need out of it, a little bit of like exile can be super relevant to against certain like reanimator decks and corpse appraiser i feel like has just been an all-star in grixis mid-range decks in general if you guys remember the the old meta where it was uh, invoke despair grixis type stuff corpse appraiser always had a spot in that and um is a perfect fit in like this grixis vampire deck as well then we have another incredible new three mana vampire well new it's from ixalan um preacher of the schism 
three mana 2 4 vampire cleric with death touch and whenever preacher of the schism attacks a player with the most life or tied for the most life you create a 1 1 white vampire creature token with lifelink and when preacher of the schism attacks while you have the most life or are tied for the most life you draw a card and you lose one life this card is just it's just so good right like the death touch on it is incredible the high toughness on it is incredible the fact that it represents card advantage the fact that it can create blockers for you if you need to i'm just a huge fan and it's just like a perfect mid-range creature and it's no like it's quite obvious why nearly every black mid-range deck runs a few copies of preachers i'm a big fan all right now it's time for some spice in here because i'm playing a copy of evelyn and if i was brave enough i play multiple copies of her because whenever i get evelyn i feel invincible like <laughs> i feel invincible she just does so much work evelyn is a five mana two five vampire with flash um and when evelyn or another vampire enters the battlefield in your control you exile the top card of each player's library with a collection counter on it and once each turn you may play a card from exile with a collection counter on it if it was exiled by an ability you controlled and you may spend mana as though if it were mana of any color to cast it Evelyn is perfect in a vampire deck because when you put Evelyn on the board, you put another vampire on the board, you start like exiling the top card of each player's library again, which is just huge. I feel like she's one of those cards that if you end up stuck in the mid range mirror and you want to somehow like, you know, find a way to break through, Evelyn does exactly that. I've had turns where Evelyn, you know, managed to, to exile an instant speed card and a sorcery speed card and been able to like play a card on my turn, play a card on my opponent's turn, and she's just great value. We then also have Gix Command, 5 mana sorcery, put 2 1 1 counters, not the 1 target creature, it gains life link at the end of turn, destroy each creature with power 2 or less, return of the 2 creature cards from your grave to your hand, or each opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest power among creatures they control. So it's kind of like a super versatile board wipe that can come in handy against a lot of these like aggro creature decks that you might find. And last but not least, we have Akazal's Deep Betrayal. I feel like if you play Black Midrange, I feel like every deck needs to have at least one copy of Akazal's in there. Once again, it's like a good mirror breaker. Five mana, four, four bat with flying and lifelink. And when it attacks, the opponent discards a card. And for each opponent who can't, you draw a card. Whenever they discard a land card, you create a one, one bat. And you have the ability to, when it dies, transform it and you can find a way to get it back. So another nice card that helps you in midrange mirrors. So I'm really like, stoked on this deck i think it's done great for me every time i play with it but let's find out whether or not this holds up in best of one as well all right so now that we understand how the deck works and why we play the cards that we're playing it's time to get into some gameplay but before we get started don't forget to like and subscribe to the official mtg arena youtube channel and if you want to see more of my own content because you know you're interested in that you can check that out over on youtube.com ashlizzle where i post daily mtg arena brews mostly standard all right, shout out to Wizard of the Ghost for allowing me to make another video for you guys. And without further ado, let's get started. All right, it looks versatile enough. I can work with this. I can work with this. Especially like the cut down into like the Corpse Appraiser has a lot of potential. Um, I'll probably start off at Xander's Lounge here. That's not too bad. <laughs> That's not too bad. All right, Warden, sure, sure. Needed that land. Um, I usually just tend to remove Warden immediately. Like, I don't want to even give them the opportunity to, like, activate it and scry. So we're going to do that. Gig's Command looking, uh, looking spicy, hopefully. No gleeful demo one time. Okay. That's fine. Cavern on a vampire. We're gonna hit the warden and draw a card. Oh, I really like Preacher though. <laughs> like part of me is like, I kind of need to try and go for this land because I do want to cast like Akasats and Gig's Command on Curve. But Preacher though. Oof, it's tricky. I think I'm going to be a Greed Lord and I'll go for Preacher. It could definitely backfire on me. But I could also draw into a land, so... We'll see, we'll see. Sometimes Greed gets rewarded, question mark? I don't know. Case, I mean, that kind of sucks. It's not the end of the world, though. Makes me slightly happier I chose for, um... 
deep breacher here, I think. We'll see. We'll try it. Okay. Four toughness. Come on now. We'll see what it can do. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Yeah, just draw a card. I'm not unhappy with the fact that they 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 will or are, but you know. Now idea. Ideally, I can't even speak. Ideally, we get land off the top. One time for the one. Gator digging, so that's a good sign. Land off the top, let's go! Okay, okay, this is good. This is good. Let's do this. So we're gonna do uh destroy each creature power two or less, and then I'm gonna do two one one counters on the creature for life gain. For life link. So that's great. All right, we might be gaming. Let's turn these life totals around, and then we're gonna cast Aklazods, live our best life. Have the vampires and bats working together in harmony. Everything is right in the world. Oh, they even had the, the case. Okay, interesting. I have to get rid of that now, though. Your board is gone. Tee hee. <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. That was a really nice one. That was a nice one. Um, I mean, I do love the double preacher, and we have the absolute best card from MKM Vein Ripper. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I also like the Cavern of Souls. Like I said, if you en end up like queuing into blue white control, you're really happy to see a cavern. One of the uh, the upsides of this deck, inspired by uh, the Pioneer or like the, the Pro Tour. I want to say it right. Pro Tour Murders. Game winning strategy. Cavern of Souls. All right, let's get this started. The modern age. So this is probably like reenact the crime stuff, I imagine. Our pool could be looking very interesting. Pool can also hit your opponent's graveyard. So that's, you know, <laughs> you, you know, we'll see, we'll see. Kaito. A lot of discard to draw. A lot of it. That's fine. I'm gonna chill. Here we go. Let's swing in with that. Okay. Um. Alright, here we go. Cavern on vamp. Preacher again. As long as I'm like just getting a land a turn, I'm chilling. <laughs> I'll be chilling. Okay, so they actively want to discard? Yeah, okay, Atraxa. This is a race to the clock. I want to grab that Atraxa. Come on now. <laughs> One time. Fortunately, like, I do also have a gopher throw in my hand, which could help, but I feel like. Okay. Besiege. Okay, reenact the crime, grab a Traxa. All right, all right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it doesn't, um... Okay, that Fading Hope could be... Tricky. Maybe we could bait it out earlier, though. We can and at least remove, uh... Remove this Atraxa and get a decent attack in, at least. Okay, got that going for us. Let's uh, hit it with go for the throat. All right. It's going to be swinging in with both these bad guys. These baddies. Okay, another push pull. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's fine, though. All right, there we go. We'll play. I guess we'll gotta play like full dare and epicure here. Yeah, this might disrupt my curve a little bit. Oof, interesting. 
But we are, like, going to fire off a bunch of poles eventually. I could try to dig for, like, an untapped one, to be honest. Like, I could discard Vein Ripper. But it depends, for real. It depends. Like, this could be either one of the greatest games of all time, or it's going to be a devastating loss. <laughs> That's kind of what it's looking like right now. Oh, no. I wonder which one it is. I don't even know what this is. Draw the discard and transform potential. Okay, sure. Do I do it? Do I go for the discard? Um, I want to say yes. I really want to try it. Okay, we get a deep cavern bat. Okay. Let's try to start off with that bat. That might actually bait out fading. So, draw a card, discard a card, transform it. Mm, okay, we're gonna see. They have a new Atraxa over there, but they're not hard casting that. They have the double fading hope, which kind of is worrying. Um, I'll grab one of them, I guess. They could use the other to do whatever else they want, I guess. I'm gonna go greed here. I'm gonna go, go overthrow on the, th this one. I'm trying to bait out the Fading Hope somehow. Um, swing with the team. I'm trying to figure out if that's what I want to do. Probably. We're just gonna push this damage through. Alrighty. So they're going to discard a Traxa. I imagine, yep. Yep. Just got to have him not hit reenact the crime here. Okay, mm draw the discard. Sure, they're digging. We're getting really close, gamers. Okay. So then what's the next move? They do still have Odawara as well. Jace? Okay. So then minus whatever, I guess. Minus one of the preachers. Great ninja. So what I'm thinking the move is, is grab. I mean, I guess they have this now. Um. So if I reanimate Vein Ripper. And they have to, like, kind of, like, Fading Hope. Fading Hope would have to sacrifice that they go to five. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna pull. How tracks that, though? It's so tempting! But I think Vayne Ripper can win me the game, so I'm gonna try to do that. It's a shame there's only, like, one thing in there, and I could have been a bit more patient, but I'm gonna try this. Because they're gonna have to try to target it, and that's gonna demand a Fading Hope. Um thing is they could still thrive like they could stay alive they could put me the oh yeah okay then they could bounce yeah i guess they can't anymore <laughs> i guess they can't anymore they should have bounced the bat then with the fading hope bounce but all right I'll take it. <laughs> all right, all right. Not as incredible. I was thinking we'd grab an Atraxa first, but the ward cost on the, the Preacher or on the, the Vein Ripper is just very nice. <laughs> very nice. Mm, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Worst case, I can use the Blood Token from the Epicure to discard the Vein Ripper, and then we can try to like look for a land because Double Preacher is pretty good. Okay, we're up against Convoke. Alrighty, at least we're uh, we're looking at our three drops pretty early, so that's good. But you never know what happens with Caliphal Demolition if they get it. Scary stuff. At least these have Death Touch as well. And there it is. Ah. Okay. Please don't give us the Pioneer Start. Please don't give us the Pioneer Start. I'll have to take that, right? 
So I'm gonna still use my blood token to discard Vein Ripper and look for something else. Mm, okay, we're gonna put this on Vampire. We're gonna grab Preacher. Gonna five. Just gonna hold back there. A bit worried about the case, but Ooh, War Leader Skull. Also slightly worrying. Um, we're gonna put that on Vampire again. I think I'm gonna like swing in with one Preacher here. Very brave. I do get a 1-1 out of it, which is quite, quite nice. Okay, so we have a bat here. I think I have to use the bat. It makes my attack pretty bad, but I'm kind of worried about Imidane. Okay, another Gleeful demo and three lands. Ayo, maybe, maybe. Okay. Three lands that are kind of in top deck mode. They kept um hen or like a land heavy heavy opener, I think. Alrighty. Um this will probably be like a double block at least for me. On one of them. Keep them out of like case and preacher range for a bit, maybe. Okay, there we go. Land. Um, so attacking with Preacher gets me a 1-1. One, one. I'm not mad at that. Mm, okay, let me see. I'm gonna swing in here. Could actually be it. They flash in those 2-2s. Two hey, Gonjo. Alright. I still get the Vampire tokens, what I care about. So I'm gonna do Corpse Appraiser to try and guarantee myself a land next turn so we can cast the best... Okay. <laughs> Hold on. Am I greed here? Absolutely. Absolutely, I'm greed. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. There we go, we got the land. Yeah, like, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get push-pull. That might backfire on me. To be quite fair with you, I was confused for a second thinking that those were my grab options. But shh, don't say that. I never make mistakes. I'm, I'm, I play this game flawlessly every time. This is true, by the way. <laughs> oops, oops. To be fair, I'm recording this, like, super late, as you might tell. So, um, yeah, my bad. I thought that those were my grab options. Forgot to hide the exile first. Anyway. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, we have a Vein Ripper. This only backfires on us if we get, like, a pull, but... We don't have that card yet, so... Up until now, like, up to, like we're okay for now, you know? We're okay. Mm. That War Leader Skull is putting in some work. Okay, they don't have... They might still have Knight Errant. Mm. Okay, let's start off with the Deep Cavern Bat, and then it's time for some math. Another land, okay. So, if I'm attacking with the Vein Ripper, it's guaranteed hit 6 face, right? I need to do 5 damage somehow. So, if I swing in... I guess swing in with this, like, Bat as well. Guaranteed 7. I have to deal 4. So, I'm definitely swinging with Corpse Appraiser. I think if I swing with everything, I should win the game. Thanks to uh, my absolute... One of my favorite cards of all time. Like, Vein Ripper has been doing it for me, you guys. I just... I don't know about you. Like, maybe let me know in the comments what your favorite, like, MKM card is. This card has been uh, incredible for me. Let's go! <laughs> all right, sweet. It's just been so good, like, every time. And I know that six mana is a lot, but whenever it comes down, like, it actually does win you the game. It's great. All right, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> I'm gonna try it. Like, I am playing a healthy amount of lands in this, like, 24, so... Which is kind of needed, right? Like, we're playing a mid-range deck. I mean, normally you're supposed to play 25, but... If some of you all are familiar with my content, you know that... That is not a thing that I ever do. <laughs> 
on average i probably play 22 lands and uh if i'm really feeling like i need to be able to curve out properly and like work with my cards i play 24. like 25 is just not something i really do all right world soul rage probably um okay i don't have like main board graveyard hate like that necessarily i would just have to like rely on being a little aggressive with it all right we're just gonna remove the aftermath analyst i removed both nissa and the analyst i need to get the land here oh no oh falling behind on lands against the aftermath analyst deck is kind of a nightmare though i have good interaction however if i can find a land still now i could be okay not that not that not the tap one <laughs> feels bad okay don't do that. They have another second Nis. Ah, the second Nissa is also incredibly painful. Yeah. Um, not ideal. At least they whiffed on the analyst, so that's good. At least. Um, I guess I'll set up the the the, the corpse appraiser. Like I kind of. I do want to hit my land drops. Okay, cavern is fine. Cavernal vampire. Vampire. We're gonna hit full there and epicure. Not that epicure really attacks well, but okay. Um yeah, I don't realistically, like whenever I play against World Soul Rage, I played in best of three and I like sideboard into, you know, hand this hand hate counter spells graveyard hate and i do turn the matchup around but like game one the deck isn't really tacked against roll soul rage so you kind of have to take the l we're kind of going to have to take the l most likely here i think it's already going to be over i also didn't know that many people played roll soul rage in best of one but um yeah this is one of the reasons why I like pr pr my preference lies with best of three because Whereas in game one, I am now hopeless against this deck. In game, like, if I play best of three, game two and three, I would be thriving, right? Like, I got my triple unlicensed hearse. I got my double negate, double disdainful stroke. I got my, like, planeswalkers for more resilience against their corpse or their, um, old timed explosions and stuff like that. But I mean, such is the life of best of one, you know? Can't, can't be prepared against everything. So I, I think we've lost this. Based on uh, Nissa doing some great stuff. But we'll see. I usually tend to like not sit it out too much though, because these games can go on for a very long time. So they got another analyst, they're gonna do it all over again. Nah, I don't think that's gonna happen for me on this one. Thing is, they do have two World Soul Rages in the graveyard, so maybe they don't have it yet, but they could get to like the big adventure. The virtue green virtue i don't recall the name at the moment but um yeah i don't know <laughs> i don't know it's just not really the matchup that we want to hit that's really where we require a sideboard nope they're just gonna basically grab every like basic land out of their own deck right now Thanks to the Capenna, like, sacrifice lands. It's interesting for sure. <laughs> it's interesting for sure. Okay, there she goes. I mean, you're taking forever now. It's, this might make me want to concede. Like, it's really not... ...that insane. Like, I've already lost. I'm just, like, sitting here. I don't know why, to be quite honest. <laughs> I don't know why, to be quite honest. Like, in the meantime, they've also gotten, to, like, 30 life and thanks to the, the, the lands from Capenna. Yeah, I think we're just gonna dip here. I think it's a respectable dip. Need to really need my sideboard for this one. And that's alright. Alright, I'll take it. 
I, I just really love seeing the preacher of the schism on turn three. Like something about that card, like it's just so good. Makes nearly like every hand kind of like keepable, you know. We also have the push pull, like potentially a vein ripper reanimator, or just using it as like removal one way or another. All right, cut down is actually huge here because the corpse appraiser synergy. Hopefully, we'll see what they play. All right, it seems to just be a pass and go. I do see a Gandalf avatar. Is this like an Esper control or like an Orts off control? I don't think my preacher uh, is going to survive past this turn. I hate to say it. <laughs> hate to say it. Get lost. All right, sure. I can exile my own preacher if I need to for Corpse Appraiser value. It's already going to probably be a... Uh, a pull matchup for a big Vein Ripper. Anyways, let's Corpse Appraise. Let's spray some corpses. I'm gonna exile the Preacher. Okay, that's fine. I still get my trigger. Uh, do I get to my land? I probably am just supposed to go for land here. There we go. I also like that the Corpse Appraiser fills up the graveyard for like the pool. So then I can use my blood token to discard Vein Ripper or I can just play Vein Ripper out regularly. I think that might be the best first move here that we can make. We Cavern of Souls on Vampire. I can probably try to like work with some map tokens here. It might eat removal and response. Okay, another land. I can probably just discard the the, the black cleave. Deep cavern bat would allow me to look at their hand, but is that what I'm looking for? Maybe, maybe. All right, so I'm gonna swing in here. Could be Wandering Emperor. There is four mana open, and it is. And again, if you're like trying to go after my Epicure, like I'm okay with that. So I'm just gonna like do cut down here. I doubt they'll play many creatures, especially cut downable ones. There I go. Okay. Sure. So now it's about sequencing this right, because I want this Vein Ripper to live. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this Epicure towards the Emperor. Like normally, obviously, you want to play the Vein Ripper out, you know, pre-combat. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to see if I can bait them to, like, remove this Samurai. And then my Vein Ripper at least survives. Um, my turn. Don't know what about the other turn, but it survives this turn at least. So there they go. This is a trade. Because else they could block my Epicure and then, you know, after declaring blockers, they could remove my Vein Ripper, sacrifice a 2-2, two -two, and then uh, they would still be able to remove the Vein Ripper. Like right now, they cannot pay the ward cost, so it, it survives at least right now. And if they want to remove the Vein Ripper, they'd have to sacrifice the Wandering Emperor, then remove it. Unless they got other plans. Okay, they just sunfall it. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> that, that That is unfortunate. Okay. Guess we gotta come up with something else. I think I'll just slam my good friend Eclazots here. Hope that they don't have another board wipe. Yeah, I was really just hoping that they would, like, you know... I mean, it ate a single board wipe. Like, I guess it's still value, right? I guess it's still value. I was hoping it would be, like, a little bit trickier for them to remove, but... Yeah, it's fine. Aklazots is still a pretty, pretty good threat, so... It's gotta be, like, Ors off control, I guess? Mm, so I can guaranteed remove something here, potentially. 
let me see because I kind of want to start off with the bat to see what's up with their hand just really hoping it's not going to be mm, let me see so what it would have to be like a get lost they would have to fire it off right now I really just hope Akasot survives and that they're like pause right now is to animate the incubator token transform it I guess that they do okay it's kind of a weird moment to do that oh my god <laughs> what? what 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 okay great um I guess I'll hit for well this is kind of like it's a yikes for me. Anyways, we're gonna do... Uh, destroy each one of sacrifice creature to highest power they control. And then I'll do... Um, probably return two creature cards, I imagine. So I'll grab back both corpse appraisers, because at least it represents card draw. Here we go. So we're gonna swing at the Wandering Emperor, I think. Because of the exile effect. Then again, the port's gonna get exiled anyways, but let me at least get rid of the Emperor. Okay. There we go. <laughs> it's not looking great. Shouldered, yeah, go play her out. Oh. Sad. All right. The exile. I don't like it. All right, corpse appraiser. The epicure. What can I do? I need to kind of hit a bat or something. Another push pull. He's so gas. Cavern on vampire. I guess I'll try again. Bat, come on. Oh, no. A bat there would have been like game changing. I just gotta get one good pull going. That's all I need. Just one good pull. Wait, what? Okay, wait, 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 wait. We're not. Hold on a second. Did not slam for well immediately. Interesting. That could be a window, is it? Maybe. Okay. Preacher of the Schism in the graveyard. I just gotta be really careful here. Both corpse appraises towards Soren, maybe? I mean, they'll block one, right? Okay. If I play this preacher out, they are definitely going to uh, slam it for well. I kind of need to avoid that, you know. I kind of am just looking for like a good pull. So I'm going to discard the preacher. Hit another land. No. Not really where I want to be at. Like, I doubt they'd hit it for well on like a solo appraiser. How this game is like I can always like pull the appraise uh, the preacher if I need to but I'm obviously looking for like a bomb or something something good another land mm -mm. all right deck don't disappoint us now it's heat of the moment could be like block with a land potentially um 
Yep, gotta be that. I guess they could do it on the other though, but land destruction is not the end of the world. I mean, they could animate the other here if they want to. They have to see it, though. <laughs> they have to see it, though. Okay, yeah, they can. Ugh. Mm, all right. Feels bad, feels bad. Not where you want to be at, my friends. Not where you want to be at. Hmm. Another push and pull. All right, let's pull. Let's just do it. At least we can get rid of Soren. That'll be step one. Draw a card with the Preacher. Uh, Corpse Appraiser. I guess I will Exile Shoulder it. Like, I do want cards. Okay. Potentially huge. Potentially huge. I think I'll actually slam the bat like right now. I want to see what's up. I want to see what's up. Deep Cavern Bat. Okay, so I'm mean, the thing. Assuming the thing that gives him priority is like Restless Fortress animation. Temporary lockdown, that's fine, I guess. They could fire off temporary lockdown to grab the bat, but then, you know, jump through that hoop first, I guess. So I'm gonna swing both appraisers towards Sorin, and then, um, Preacher of the Schism goes face, I guess. That's why I want to ignore Sorin, but I don't think that's right. Soren can still create like blockers with lifelink and such. Evelyn! Okay, hold on. Evelyn can put in the work. Evelyn can definitely put in the work. Wait, we might have a game here still after all. We might have a game here after all. She could steal everything. <laughs> Evelyn steal one ring emperor challenge. Evelyn steal a steal a Sorin challenge. Like that would be very own brand for us. Vampire stealing a vampire, planeswalker. All right, we're getting some ropes from the opponent. I will. Um, yeah, I'll probably just play the land out here, and then I'm gonna pass. So these two sacrifice. We could try it again if we want to with the with the pool. So we're probably seeing temporary look down here first. To grab for a while back. Okay. For well, exiling the graveyard would be quite tragic. They might go for it now, to be honest, knowing that we have push pull. <laughs> they might not want to get hit by that again. Yeah, there we go. Graveyards exiled. But we have Evelyn. Now the thing is, do I play her out now? I want to say yes, because I could cast something with her. Uh, whatever I exile, like if I had a planeswalker, like I'd be really happy. Or like a creature or something. I might try it, guys. Risky. Oh my god. Is that a one ring emperor? <laughs> okay. We can actually just like casually pass the turn here because we can still play the wandering emperor. Like Evelyn, it's where it's at. 
I'm not brave enough to run multiple copies of her, but she's just fantastic. All right, we see a Kaya here. Okay, and then we're going to do Wandering Emperor. Evelyn, thank you for your service. This is rough, though. They get their own Evelyn now. They stole my girl. Just as I thought, like, okay, we're kind of in this, you know? Anyway. Deep Cavern Bat, all right, you are huge at least. Or uh, Deep Cavern Bat, Vein Ripper, you're huge at least, or huge. So I'm gonna plus this. Advance towards Kaya. Do I, can I find something relevant? A cut down. Okay, that's huge. <laughs> this is so like back and forth, man. I don't even know how to like process this stuff. This is so back and forth. Oh my God. So they cannot target. Okay, I'll scry one. Um. I don't have anything in my graveyard either, right? Oh, actually, I do. I have a... Okay, I'm fine with that then. I have an ep Epicure in there. This is so back and forth, like, I can't. So, what are you gonna do? Exile my board? If you don't, it's gonna get interesting for you. What's this then? Alright, let me see if I can find something valuable. Also, like, the Corpse Appraiser Mill could make a huge pull. So if I go here... I still have mana to cast that, right? Mm, okay. Eh. <laughs> Damn, why did that have to be so mid? Anyways. I guess we have the Soken Song? I'm going in, I think. I'm going in. I... I, I don't know. The Vein Ripper feels, like, barely targetable. Like, they have to animate the Restless land the restless fortress and then target it or i guess they could do mirax to create a might but they could do i think the best thing they could do is like okay <laughs> all right well i was that was not that was not on my list of things that i thought were gonna happen big march i was thinking like if they have to target the vein ripper they have to sacrifice and stuff Man, I need to stay alive. No. Why is this so close? Ugh, I can't. <laughs> I got 16 cards left. All right, well, that doesn't solve your problem so far. Come on now, you don't have it. Virtue of Persistence, does still trigger Vein Ripper. You don't have it, come on. Okay. That was an experience. Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know how we we won that. I was gonna say I don't know how we won that, but we won that with the power of the Vein Ripper. The card is so good. <laughs> Let's go, guys.